this point, I will proceed to invite JB Strobel, who is uh, in charge of the technical and engineering division of Tesla Motors. He's a co-founder of the company and had before Tesla a very dynamic and innovative background in the same area, but this time with high altitude aircraft. Uh, the floor is yours. Well, uh, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to share uh, my views and our views with, uh, with this group. And I think you know, Tesla you know, has a unique position and a unique vantage point on what's happening regarding innovation in the transport sector. We're, we're in the midst of it, and we've been uh, you know, part of helping drive that from our point of view for, for the number of years since we were founded. Uh, could I ask uh, JB from Tesla a question? You talked about um, what you do with the batteries at the end of their life, and you, you say you would melt them down and make new batteries. Of course, one alternative would be to use those batteries, which maybe have declined in efficiency, in static locations to help even out the um, unpredictability of, of renewable energy supply. But I wonder if you've taken that one stage further, because you, know, you will have a lot of customers around the world who have downloaded cheap electricity at night when the wind was blowing, or maybe in the daytime when the sun was shining, who maybe don't need their car on a particular day. Have you looked at how they could then upload that electricity to the grid to help even out the unpredictability of supply from renewables and actually become electricity traders using their car as, as, as the bank? Yeah, two, two good questions there. The, you know, we have a whole separate business unit at Tesla that we've, we've launched um, that, that uses the same architecture of our batteries to store, store grid energy. And we have a, a product called the Power Wall, which does that in homes, and also a product for utilities and commercial customers. You know, those, those are using new batteries, however. You know, we've looked at um, reuse, or kind of the second life of automotive batteries uh, for grid applications you know, very, very closely. And you know, ultimately, every time we've studied this, we, we come to the conclusion that it's, it's not a very ac economical or very good use of those, those assets. You know, by the time they come out of a, transport, out of a vehicle that's, that's lived its life, you know, the technology will be quite old. You know, we expect 10, maybe 15 year life at a minimum from these batteries. And you know, the, the degradation is not, not entirely linear. You know, by the end of their life, you know, the efficiency has degraded. On every cycle, you see lower efficiency. Um, the capacity will have somewhat degraded. Um, and for a lot of reasons, you know, it, it makes it very difficult to deploy those efficiently back into a grid setting where you want high reliability and you do want predictability. So you know, my view is that we'll see you know, new batteries dedicated to that market um, that also have slightly different characteristics. They should have higher cycle life. In an electric vehicle that has you know, 200 plus miles of range, you don't need as many cycles as you do on a battery that's designed to charge and discharge every single day on the grid. You know, there's perhaps about a factor of four or five difference in the cycle life. So, so that's one aspect. Um, to your second question about you know, using vehicles as a, as a buffer for renewable energy, you know, this is definitely something that, that's coming. And I think there's, there's two ways to implement this. The, the first is to use dynamic charging. And this is essentially you know, intelligently commanding when the vehicles absorb their energy from the grid you know, to match up with when you have renewable energy you know, available or cheap. You know, this is something we can do very, very easily with just essentially software and controls. We don't have to change any of the hardware. And there's no additional uh, regulatory or certification work needed. It's just essentially controlling the timing of when something would otherwise happen. If we want to actually send energy back from the car to the electricity grid, this gets much more complex. And you know, that's something that I don't see being a, a, a very economic or viable uh, solution in, in perhaps ever, but certainly not in the near term. You know, the additional wear and tear and degradation on your vehicle battery you know, has a fairly high cost. And many of the people and small businesses looking at this today you know, don't take into account fully that degradation cost. Um, and also the additional inter, you know, interconnection cost. Because if you interconnect your vehicle, you do have new regulations that, that play a part. It has to interconnect in the same way that a solar system would on someone's home or on a business, which have different standards so that they can protect line operators and, and people on the grid.